Hey everybody, this is the Dimensional Tempest coming out with my very first video and I want that video to basically help free-to-play players and new players to Team Fortress 2 with the best settings for Team Fortress 2. So without further ado, let's just go up to this options section. Now in my HUD, the options are in this bar right here, but probably if you haven't installed the HUD and you're new to the game, the options are going to be down here and the advanced options are going to be down here or so. So let's just open up the advanced options and let's check out the combat options. So basically what we have here is that what I have checked is fast weapon switch, play hit sound every time you injure an enemy, display damage done as text over your target, and play a sound when the sniper rifle is fully charged. Now these first three are in my opinion pretty much absolutely essential for uh, improving your Team Fortress 2 game. Um, what fast weapon switch does is that it makes it so that when you're scrolling you don't actually have to click the picture a second time to swap to your weapon and it saves you a click every time you want to swap weapons. This actually makes it so that you can actually manage your gameplay a lot easier and it makes it so that you can react to situations in game a lot better and there's really no reason not to have this option enabled. The same goes for these next two options, playing a hit sound every time you hit an enemy and displaying damage done as text over your target. Because really what uh, playing a hit sound does is that it'll uh, alert you to exactly what you're doing, exactly when you're doing damage, um, sometimes even when you're not able to see them. For example, if you're an engineer away from your sentry, or if you're a pyro and you lit someone on fire and they're running away, you'll be able to know exactly for how long they're burning, um, when they healed up, Maybe they made it to the resupply locker, when, uh, but you'll be able to tell that they healed um, when you lit them on fire They and you can no longer hear that little tick, 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 tick sound uh, that is enabled by this option. And I definitely recommend all three of these options. This last option here is more of a personal preference. Um, essentially what it does is that usually when you're playing the sniper you're going to be focused more on hitting your target than on how far your bar is filled up. So if I've been scoped in for a while and plays a ding sound I like to know that I'm at full maximum power to uh, completely stop uh, pretty much any class in battle. These last three options, in my opinion, aren't really that necessary. You can tweak around with them uh, if you'd like. These two deal with uh, what weapon you spawn with equipped, and then this one also deals with automatically reloading. This one's actually a pretty nice option if you're not planning to play with view models because uh, basically if, if you do have this option on, you'll be constantly ro reloading and it'll all constantly show you the reloading view model. And that is really annoying to some players, especially new players and players like me, so I just have this option off by default. Now we move on to some class specific options. The first option is for the spy, the next, three uh, next two options are for the sniper, and the last three options are for the medic. The only one I have uh, enabled here is displaying a marker over the player you're healing. And I just, it just helps me kind of find out my target in a crowd, make sure that I don't lose them, always make sure if I'm healing a guy who's been calling for medic or whatnot. Um, Th this last one here um, basically makes it so that when your teammates fall under a certain health threshold, I don't have it uh, enabled here, but say I have it uh, dragged up to about like 50 or so, when they fall below a certain health threshold and they're reasonably close by to you, a little symbol somewhere pointing with an arrow in their direction will automatically appear for you. Now, I don't have this on because I already have plenty of people dealing, uh, plenty of people to heal, and those who aren't really calling for medic basically just don't need the medic. So, uh, I'm just going to assume that low health people who aren't calling for medic are like equalizing away or, um, or just finding another source of health and don't really need me. So, I kind of have this option off. This first option here uh, basically makes it so that you don't have to hold down your left mouse button in order to continue healing someone. I have no problem with having this enabled, in fact I probably would have this enabled, but for some reason for me on a personal level, just having this disabled and constantly holding down that medigun makes me feel really good when I'm playing a medic. But this one is completely up to you. These two deal with the sniper and uh, I'm actually going to mention this first one specifically because uh, it, I feel like it de detriments your gameplay if you haven't enabled. Um, basically, if you don't have this checked, your sniper rifle will automatically resume every time you take a shot, and you have to right-click again to make uh, to unzoom in order to move around again. Now, I am a firm believer in not getting tunnel vision and being a very aware and as well as mobile sniper, and really having this option enabled kind of 
just detracts you from being able to do that. And because this option's enabled uh, by default, I feel like beginning sniper players have this habit to just stick in one place and not move, and really that's not what a sniper should be doing. Eventually, when I do make a sniper commentary in one of my later videos, I will be talking about mobility and also this option. This last option we have available here is for the spy, and this is also up to personal uh, personal preference. Because what it does is that it makes it so that you press two button, uh, two uh, you press you have three options. Excuse me, you have three buttons to choose from. Um, and then once you choose a button, that uh, gives you three more different options to give you a total of nine different options for disguising for uh, disguising your class. Now, uh, basically what it does is that it saves your hand from having to dash all over the keyboard when you're, um, when you're disguising as a spy from the digits one through nine, but it also makes it so you have to press two buttons before you get your disguise as a spy. So uh, I have this disabled, but it's all up to you. Remember, this guide is basically to show you what um, a seasoned Team Fortress 2 player has uh, for his settings and his recommendations for you, but it all comes down to what you're comfortable with and what you want your Team Fortress 2 experience to be like. Now let's move on to HUD options. Uh, minimal HUD basically just makes all your numbers smaller and kind of hides a few unnecessary things. Um, if you're familiar with Team Fortress 2, yeah, go ahead and enable it. Um, but if you're a new player, I really don't recommend having this enabled. Colorblind mode just screws with the colors a bit to cater to colorblind people. So if you're colorblind, by all means, use this mode. These past three and uh, these next three that I have checked are checked by default and don't really have any impact on gameplay uh, when you're starting off. So don't, uh, don't make such a fuss over this and just leave them alone for now. Now let's check the view model field of view. What this does is that it makes it makes your view model, which is that little image of your gun uh, at the bottom right hand of your screen, it makes it uh, closer or further away from you. Now I have this set a little bit higher than default because I kind of think that it's pretty funky to have that gun held out so far back by default and it makes it so look like that you're holding your gun right up to the side of your face. And that just kind of looked ugly to me so I altered my view model a bit so that it looks at least a tad bit more realistic. View models are purely aesthetic and they're like hats. It's Hat Fortress 2, but view models are also just purely aesthetic and don't particularly matter. These next ones are unchecked by default. If you wanna, uh, if you have more experience and you wanna screw around with these, by all means, but I'm not really gonna be talking about them in this guide because it's directed towards new players. Replay options are also kind of unimportant for now. You can take some time to screw around with these if you feel like uh, taking a bunch of replays and publishing them onto YouTube. I know a lot of people really enjoy doing this, but we're gonna move on now to miscellaneous options. Um, performance options don't really matter, though I do rec uh, recommend having this checked because it'll disable some annoying advertisements in some servers. Let's move on to miscellaneous options. Um, suiciding after choosing a player class, if you happen to be outside a spawn, it'll just suicide if you decide to choose a different class. This is checked by default. I saw no reason to change it, but you really shouldn't be changing your class outside a spawn anyway. So check it, don't check it, it doesn't really matter. Automatically respawning after loadout changes in respawn zones. There's no reason not to have this one enabled because it'll save you the trouble of finding a respawn locker and tapping it before you make any loadout edits. So uh, you'll basically just automatically respawn and you'll be ready to go without touching the uh, resupply, mo uh, resupply locker and you'll be fine. Drawing view models basically turns on those pictures that I highlighted earlier in the field of view discussion. And uh, disabling sprays will basically disable those player pictures that they can post randomly on the map. I don't know, but some players that I've played with are uh, they have a, an arsenals of inappropriate images so I have sprays disabled by default. Um, these rest are checked by default and uh, they don't really matter so much. If you're annoyed by trade requests just uncheck this one but you really shouldn't be having problems with those if you're a new player. Now I'm going to be talking about the uh, regular options and the only category I really have to talk about here is under the mouse. And the two things under the mouse are going to be mouse sensitivity and mouse acceleration. 
I'm just going to start off by saying that mouse acceleration be should be off. Now, before uh, before a certain update, quite a few, uh, quite a while ago, like maybe a couple years ago, in fact, um, Team Fortress 2 did not have this uh, disabled by default. It actually didn't have an option for toggling mouse acceleration, and because your laptop or your computer is uh, automatically calibrated with mouse acceleration when you're not in game. This makes it actually really hard for you to aim in game because the more you move your mouse in one direction, the faster your mouse goes, and it's pretty much impossible to gauge a good movement to uh, shoot other players with. Um, thankfully, mouse acceleration is now an option. If you for some reason want it, by all means check it, but it's off by default, and there is a reason why it's off by default. I completely and utterly hate mouse acceleration in my first person shooter games and I totally recommend for you to leave this off. Now the last thing that I really want to talk about here is mouse sensitivity. By default it's at about 3 which is at about the middle and what mouse sensitivity does is that affects uh, what, how, how quickly your movements make you turn around um, in Team Fortress 2. Now in my opinion the ideal mouse sensitivity to be at is the sensitivity that you need to be at to be able to make a complete 180 degree turn um, extremely quickly. And as a result my mouse sensitivity is a little bit higher. Now uh, this is all completely up to you. Um, a lot of players really like uh, higher sensitivity sensitivities. I've seen players with maximum sensitivities and they're completely boss. Um, the best snipers, some of the best snipers that I know have maximum sensitivity so they, uh, they can have a lot of um, free movement in their point and click adventures. But I also know plenty of snipers who have lower than average sensitivity so that they don't have their mouse jerk off the tar target while they're sniping. What uh, what comes down to it is that it's all up to style and the way that you aim and the way that you play is completely unique to you and basically just find a mouse sensitivity that works for you and stick with it. Um, you can, you're can you always free to experiment with the mouse sensitivity gauge. I have mine set permanently at 4 and I'm perfectly happy with it. You'll see that I turn a little bit quicker in the gameplays that I'll upload eventually. But yeah, that's all I really have to talk to you about today. Thank you for listening. It's my first video. I plan to upload more vi videos in the future. I hope I didn't stutter too much, and I hope my voice hasn't been too boring. But yeah, I hope uh, I hope you got you learned something from this video, and look out for more videos from me in the future. Thanks for watching, guys.